This one I'm doing an image with open lines. It's a little different and I didn't cover that in the last video so I'm going to go ahead and cover that here. And I'm just using the old basic tattered flag for this video so just something to show with open paths. But I've got my path here and this is the size I'm going to cut this file at. You always want it the size you're going to cut it before you adjust it any for the render. But I'm start out with the path size so I'm at 20 inches wide here I'm gonna select this hit shift control K to break it apart or you could go to path break apart now that I broke this path apart I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna select all the open lines while holding shift and clicking on them depending on the file it can be hard to spot every one of the open lines but you want to select every one of them and just keep holding shift and clicking on them until they're all highlighted okay I think I've got them all there maybe I can't tell if, no I didn't have that one okay so now that I've selected them all I'm gonna to go to my fill and stroke menu I'm gonna to go to stroke style and I'm going to set the stroke at my kerf width. 43 thousandths with fine cut consumables is about what I get on my kerf. So I'm going to set it to 43 thousandths. And then I'm going to go down here to the cap. And I'm going to round the cap. That way the ends are rounded off more like a plasma cut would be. So now that's going to be roughly what my single line cuts would look like. Cut at 43 thousandths kerf. Now that I've adjusted the stroke... I'm going to go to path, stroke to path, and then path, union, or shift control plus. So now all my strokes, all these single line cuts are converted to closed paths. So now I'm going to drag a box around everything except for the outer contour. And I'm going to shift control plus, or like say path, union combine all those union them together now I'm gonna hit page up a couple times just to make sure that this layer is on top of the outside contour now I'm gonna hold shift select the outside and then shift control minus or path difference and now I've converted this open line file to a file with closed paths so now I can turn my stroke off turn my fill on and now this is ready to be rendered. So now I can go file, import. I can find my texture that I want to use. Got this scratched metal texture. I open that up. Comes in pretty big, but I'll page that down. Now I'm going to bring in my background image import I've got all various ones here it doesn't really matter you can use whatever you want usually if you're rendering an image just to show your an example cut you want something with a little background noise so it's not easily traceable so I'm gonna select this hit open bring it in I find pretty good rule of thumb somewhere in that range 800 pixels or less on the background size gives you a decent image to post you know on social media or your website but not a high quality image where it's an easy trace so then I'm going to scale my path down I'll page that up where you can see it I'm going to scale that down to fit my background so it's there. Now I'll select my metal texture here and page that up. And I I scale my metal down to roughly the size of my path there. And the reason for that is, you know, I've got this scratched texture. The closer to the path size I get it, the better grain or pattern you're going to have in your path that you've cropped out here. So now I've got both of these. I normally will select these, select the background last, because I use 
on my line and distribute I always use last selected so I select the path the scratch metal and then select my background and then I will align it to the center both ways horizontally and vertically now I'm just gonna select my path and I'm gonna hit control D to duplicate that you can't tell it did it but there's a duplicate there now now I'm gonna hold shift and select the scratch metal and I'm gonna to go to object clip set now it just looks like the metal disappeared but I'm gonna click on the top again this is my extra path and I'm gonna page that down one now you can see our clipped image now with that one I page down still selected I always add a shadow I'll go to filters shadows and glows and I add a drop shadow these are about the settings I use and I hit apply as you can see it put a little bit of a shadow effect behind it that kind of helps a little with being able to see the details depending on the background so now I've got my image rendered there the only other important thing is when you render an image like this when you clip an image if I save this as a PNG if I just go file save as and select a PNG it won't save the clipped image correctly when you clip an image like this you're going to want to select your background that's the size you want your image to be and hit shift control D bring up your document properties or you can just go file document properties but you bring up this document properties window I'll show my page border here as you can see my page border is not where my path is or where my image is and I'll select this normally when you open it this this will be closed click on this and then select resize page to drawing or selection so now my document property is the size of this background so whatever you have selected when you hit resize to drawing or selection that's the size your page is going to be adjusted to so now I've done that I'll close this and then when you want to save this go to export PNG select page you want to export the page size name it whatever file name you want to name in this case it's just tattered flag and then you go down here with this export with the check mark on it hit that and then it's going to export that image to your selected folder so that's how I render one with open lines to get the same effect of you know the cut metal look on a clipped image and the reason I always say to do to change your stroke width with the path at cut size is if you size it down to your background first then it's hard to pick a reasonable size with your stroke width to make it look like your curve width so I always adjust the stroke size and, and convert it to close paths with it at the full cut size and then I'll scale it down to the size I'm rendering it at hopefully that helps that's how I render a file with open lines it's a little trickier than rendering one with closed paths so hopefully I covered that there and helped somebody out thanks for watching